from Jeanette Keynes from Jewelry Arts Inc. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to bezel set a beautiful doublet opal. So the beautiful, magical moment is upon us. We're getting ready to set this gorgeous opal. Now, if you remember this opal from times past, <laughs> look at that sexy little stinker. So cute beautiful look at the different colors we got some red in there and green in there all kinds of good things uh so <laughs> i showed alexis my ocd method of putting this in here with a rubber band so that it's nice and protected but then it also doesn't stick up and get in your way which when you're setting a little stuff is actually surprisingly important if you were saying if you've got like a big thick ring you can just kind of wad up your paper towel or whatever however you want but with something like this we had to make sure it doesn't get crushed in there so we did this very lovely arrangement and then we just put a little bit of blue tape over the edges of the ring shank just in case we slip i mean of course we won't but just in case so uh, people get nervous about setting opals. They are fragile, for sure. There's no question about it. But I have found over the years, if you follow certain protocols, you'll be just fine. So the, the first big protocol was already observed, which is when she made her bezel, you can't take the bezel and like shove it up against the stone and really like use the stone like a little bit of a mandrel, which who among us does not sort of do that a little bit when we're shaping our bezels? So when you're making a bezel for an opal, you have to be absolutely sure that you put it down and check and make adjustments with your pliers and then check and not just like push against a stone, which we do in lots of circumstances. So that was very successful. Now, a lot of people go wrong in setting opals because they're like, opal's fragile. I want to protect it. So I'm going to set it low in there and put lots of metal over top to protect it. Like, no, that's what breaks the opal. So when you set an opal, you want a super minimal amount, like just enough to hold it. Okay, so if I take my little red wax and hold it up next to this bezel, I think you can see that we're going to need to raise it up just a little bit. Now, there are times you may say, oh, I'm going to sand my bezel down, but this ring is set down into the little shank, which, of course, I guess we'll show you that after we take it out, but we don't have room to do that. We can't remove any bezel. We need to leave it just the way it is. So a lot of times for underneath an opal, I actually use um, cardboard. Uh, it's kind of like when you're putting something under an enamel. It's really nice to have something with a tiny bit of give in there rather than metal. And, you know, you don't, if, if it makes you uncomfortable, you don't have to. But I can tell you we've been setting, like, enamels and stuff like that on top of cardboard for, like, 30 years here. And it just, it doesn't do anything. It just stays there. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little shape, put this in here. Because I don't want to take this and shove it in here until I think I have a pretty good chance of it being the right height. Because if this bezel is nice and tight, which one hopes that it is, um, it could get stuck, which I don't want. And I know I need to raise it somewhat. So usually I try to recommend to people like, look it from the side first, make some adjustments before you start shoving it in there. So I'm gonna just eyeball guesstimate it, but you could always take your stone and like trace around it or whatever, but I think I'm just gonna do a little something. <laughs> It's cardboard, so I'm not really worried about uh, wasting it. The good thing about cardboard as well is if it's a little too high, you can actually separate this into layers. Mm -hmm. So it actually, um, you can make very fine adjustments with, with the, with the uh, cardboard, well, postcard, whatever you want to call it. You see that? So you see, like, I made it fit pretty well, but it's not like, it doesn't have to be hermetically sealed or anything like that. So let's take a look now. I think we may still need to raise it a little bit. I'm gonna put one more in here and that may be too high, but um, mm -hmm. like I said, I don't wanna really shove it in there while it's real low. And you were eyeballing it from like just 
ho holding it over yes the bezel and exactly the trying to get like kind of look i'm looking at the height of that mm -hmm. and i'm looking inside and saying at okay where that hits. yeah like how much is in there again so i'm like oh, i think it needs to come up a little bit if i'm wrong you know we pull the thing out so it also kind of reminds me a little bit like you know how in the old plaster walls you can find old newspapers someday a little time capsule you know inside your piece someone will find yep cardboard bit Just like when I push down on here hard, which I will within reason, it's nice to know that there's something in there that can give a little bit that isn't your opal, if you know what I mean, because opals don't give, by the way, they crack. I should do it. Tiny trim over here. That you guys are excited to be watching me trim cardboard, huh? Okay. So let's take this now. Lovingly place it in. I'm gently pressing with my finger because I'm trying to get it down in there without, you know, being too violent. Because I think it's almost right. Oh. Actually, can you take a little close up of that as I'm pressing this down with my and flipping it across? <laughs> Shh, don't tell anybody. We'll edit that part out. Yeah. <laughs> Which, no. by the way, I never edit those parts out of. I was like, ah, let them see what it's really like. Now I'm doing super close-ups of your fingers. Sorry about that, but there you go. So you see that? Yep. I may lower the opal by a molecule, but basically that's what you want. Yeah, I'm going to lower the opal just a hair. I want that edge, though, to be like just clearing the top with no extra. So what I'm going to do, and like I said, that's an advantage of this. I'm going to take it and I'm going to peel it. I mean, you see how it kind of bounces up a little bit when I, but when I press on it, it's like, just, I want to go down in there a tiny bit more, which, you know, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. And your bezel fits lovely. Yes, it fits. It did. did a good job. It made me proud. <laughs> Okay, so this is what I mean by you can do small increments, you know, like that, and peel it apart, which makes it surprisingly <laughs> useful. Because, you know, everything about setting is incremental. It's not just like, here's the right height, and you put it in there, and there it is. There's always, like, you put it in, you adjust a tiny bit, you look. I mean, there's a lot of small adjustments. <laughs> Right. And then that's right. So I'm just going to hold it right there. Like the opal could be also maybe a hair lower if we wanted, but I just want you to see like, this is what I'm talking about. This is a real minimal thing. If you're setting your opals with a lot of bezel sticking out above it, more than likely, uh, you're going to crack your opal. You know, can it be done? Sure. But for the most part, it adds a lot of risk. I got it, I got it, there it is. You see that, just that tiny little bit of bezel? You see that? That's what we're going for, okay? Okay, so you see what I mean? Just the very tiniest little bit of bezel, that's all we want. All right, well, I'm gonna put my finger over the opal to hold it in place, and we're gonna start setting. So just like any stone setting, getting the height right is like, you know, a good 85% of the whole difficulty. So now we're like, it's in there, it's level, the height is really good. So what we're gonna do to set it is not gonna be particularly different than how we set a normal stone. Like we've got plenty of room around it, so we're just gonna use the bezel roller from the master setting tool set. Um, and we're gonna work our way around. I'll start with the, the sharpest points, you know, and work my way around. The only difference is when I'm setting an opal, I like to think of it as like maybe that last 20% of force that you might do with a normal stone where you're like, maybe I'll go in with the leather mallet and er, you're like, no, no, no. Get it up against the opal and get the hell out. 
you know, it's, it, you have to know when to quit. Like I said, we'll close it. But we're not going to go insane. <laughs> I have hammered on opals, but I don't really recommend it unless you're operating in pro mode. You know, like, yes, you can do it, but it's pretty tricky. And so do what I say and not what I do. <laughs> Honestly, though, you're not going to need it for something like this. And then the opal there it is. on the floor. We're showing real life studio experience. It was flashing orange, so it was easy to see. Yep. Okay. I will not tilt it quite as much this time to get it started. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'm going to put my finger over the stone, you know, hold my bezel roller between my thumb and my forefinger like so. Rest it on the edge. Press in a little. Because you see how I'm, like, kind of working the point. Now, granted, this is not a very sharp point, but still I'm going to be pressing in and moving the excess away from the point. Can you see that? And that's the problem also when you're setting. Your fingers kind of cover the stone. Mm -hmm. You really can't see super, yeah. <laughs> super great. It is Do you hard. Mind? So you see, I mean, I, I'm not done yet, of course, but you see how I'm just, I'm pressing it up against it. So it's just, you know, over the top there. It's a very minimal setting. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'll go over to the other sharpest point, you know, and, but like I said, yes, I'm pulling back by 20% in, in the sense that last extra, like, ugh, when you're setting, you don't do with an opal. We're going to get it closed, make sure the opal isn't moving and get the fuck out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And this is where, of course, having a beautifully fit bezel, like really pays off. Which Alexis does, because she's a fucking rock star. <laughs> Everything is always about prep. The final stage is relatively unimportant if everything else has gone well. If your prep steps are shit, you're fucked, no matter how good you are at setting. You know what I mean? Yep. Press in and roll it. So I'm going to work, keep working this a little bit. But the great thing about setting an opal is if you've done all that prep work, right, and the bezel fits pretty well, setting will take you, you know, five, ten minutes because there's not a lot to do. And I can move my angle up a little, but what you have to be careful to avoid is the desire to do that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's Because tempting. too much of that downward force on the opal will break it. So I will move my angle up maybe a little, but you really have to be gentle and feel your way. Like the opal is no longer moving and there's no obvious spaces. So I'm going to basically do a little like finesse now, but we're really like in the home stretch. Okay. Do we have a little Nick over here? Um, not that I saw. Well, I'm zooming in. Yeah, there is. I, we have a little one now. And what this shows is that even with the most loving of care, sometimes you can get a little nick. Now, the fact of the matter is you're, you're aware that you're not going to see it. It's going to be fine. Yeah. But that's what I mean by you can't like, you can't go crazy on this baby. It's, I didn't even see it happen. I just looked down and went, wait. It appeared. Yes. At some point. Naughtily. God, I love the colors of this opal. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Oh, 
Okay, so maybe like you can put the macro in there and do a little close up, but basically there's no gaps. We do have one little chip, but uh, that does happen sometimes. So you can't get too distraught. If the opal's in one piece, we consider it a win. Uh, so just take a look. And if there's anything else you wanna do, you can, but honestly, I don't think I'd particularly recommend it. I think it's done. Okay, so we have both looked and we both concur. It's, it's totally done. And what I was saying is, you can use uh, the Swifty wheel, the square wheel from the bezel settings polishing kit right on the top. It won't hurt the opal, believe it or not. Right, just like flat on the top to give you that shiny edge and that's it, you're done. And what that's what we were saying is a lot of people don't visualize this minimal of an edge. So they're trying to get way more. And you saw that chip happen. Like, I, I don't even know, like it just appeared. Opals can be that way. So you have to really treat them gently. Now, don't get me wrong, if you look at pieces of jewelry, mine, yours, everyone's, you know, you'll see little chips like this because that can sometimes just happen. But you're just trying to make sure not to make like a really big obvious chip or, you know, a total destruction situation. <laughs> so I think this looks great. Uh, you're gonna just swifty the wheel the top and basically wear your ring and you're all done. So there it is in all its glory. Look at that gorgeous opal. <sighs> I love it. Absolutely fantastic. So observe a minimalist bezel is the way to go.